Well, it's almost the end of March in Tosh, and I thought this would be a great time to update my video on how I install and configure Basilisk 2 to run classic macOS on my MacBook Air. There were some comments on my previous video that perhaps suggested it was slightly too complicated, so I hope that in this video it will be a little bit easier to follow and understand. Right after this message from PCBWay. Our good friends over at PCBWay have kindly sponsored this video. PCBWay offers a variety of services from PCB production and assembly to 3D printing in various materials, injection moulded plastics and even sheet metal fabrication. They offer a very professional and high quality service for extremely reasonable prices. Check out a link for their website in the description below. So first of all we need to download Basilisk 2, but what is it? Well simply put it's a piece of software called an emulator that allows you to simulate another computer on your existing machine entirely in software. There are several Apple specific hardware emulators and each does a slightly different thing. Basilisk 2 emulates what's called a 68k Mac, that's the original Mac released in about 1984 up to about 1994 when Apple introduced the Power Macintosh platform, or QEMU for classic macOS and certain releases of macOS 10. There is also Pair PC, but this hasn't been updated in almost a decade, so we'll skip over that. If you simply Google Basilisk 2, the results will take you to the Basilisk 2 website, where unfortunately you'll be taken over to GitHub, and you'll be required to download and compile your own copy of the software. This is far too much like hard work, so if you go back to Google and this time search for Basilisk 2 Immaculation, then the nice folks over there have already compiled a version that you can download. Next I recommend that you scroll down the page and find Basilisk 2 GUI. This is a graphical application that allows you to much more easily configure Basilisk, so we'll download that too. We now need a ROM. This contains boot information as well as required runtime routines that are essential for getting a Mac to run. The easiest place to get a good known working ROM is to Google Redundant Robot Sheep Shaver. On this page download the Performer ROM. We'll next need an operating system installer CD, as we'll need to install some system software inside the virtual machine. There are several websites to get CD images, known as ISOs from, but my preferred website is WinWorld PC, but you could find one elsewhere such as the fantastic macintoshgarden.org, which we'll use in a minute for something else. Basilisk 2 will work up to macOS 8.1, which was the last supported 68k operating systems. And just as I mentioned moments ago, Oh, and this step is entirely optional. We can go to macintoshgarden.org and search for Aaron. This little application includes a hard disk icon, as I don't like the default one and it doesn't fit in with the platinum theme of macOS 8 that I'm installing. Finally, and again, this step is entirely optional, as you can create disk images in Basilisk itself, but the disk jockey application created by fellow retro enthusiast One Geek Army is worth a mention as not only can you create images used for an emulator, but you can create disk images for use on many other platforms. It's a great utility to have in one's toolbox. So how is this disk image any different from the ISO that I mentioned before? Well, an ISO is generally a read-only image of a CD-ROM, whereas this image, usually a .img file, is a virtual hard drive for use with your emulator. It's essentially a hard disk in software, and because it's a file, it means that we don't need to worry about any scary disk partitioning, and if we need to get rid of it, you simply delete it. Now one thing I did forget to mention in my previous video is that you should move Basilisk 2 out of your downloads folder. So what I'm doing here is simply creating a folder in my applications folder called Basilisk 2, and then moving the files into that. This just keeps my downloads folder nice and tidy. I'm going to move the ROM into the same folder and rename it to Macintosh ROM. This isn't entirely necessary as we'll be specifying this file in the Basilisk 2 GUI application, but it's false of habit. The ROM can be called anything really, as long as Basilisk 2 knows what it's called and where to find it. Generally downloads from WinWorld PC are 7-zip compressed archives. To get the ISO out, you have to decompress it, and to do this you simply double click on it and let macOS do its thing for you. I like to create a folder inside my Basilisk 2 folder, which I'll use as a transfer location to get files in and out of my virtual machine. Once again this is optional, but it helps keep things tidy, and we'll put Aaron in here. And in the spirit of keeping things tidy, we'll move over the macOS 8 ISO 2. Right, we're almost there I promise, just a few more steps. 
What we'll need to do next is run Disk Jockey to create a hard disk image. This should be in our downloads folder in a zip file and we'll need to decompress it. So double click on the zip and macOS will sort this out for us. We need to do a little bit more housekeeping and we can open it up. Next we'll specify the size of disk image that we need to create and bearing in mind that these older operating systems and applications require vastly less space than today. For example, Office 98 is almost 90 megabytes to install, whereas Word nowadays is almost 1.5 gigabytes in size, and I'm sure it really is 16.667 times better. We'll choose Basilisk 2 slash Sheepshaver from the drop down in Use With, and then click on the Create Image, find the Basilisk 2 folder in Applications that we created earlier, and click Select Folder, nice and easy. If you've made it to this point in the video, give yourself 10 bonus internet points. We're now ready to start configuring our virtual machine, and to do this, we open Basilisk 2 GUI. The first page we're taken to is Volumes, and this is where we add our disk images to. Click the Add button and browse to the Basilisk 2 folder that we created in Applications earlier. Basilisk will use these disks in order, so specify the macOS 8 installer CD first, and then the hard disk image we just created in the Disk Jockey application. Next to the Unix root folder, Click the button Browse. Then find the Apps folder inside the Basilisk 2 folder where we moved Aaron to earlier and click Open. Click on the Graphics and Sound tab and make any changes that you wish to make. Usually I specify the window refresh rate to 30Hz as I found this is a reasonable compromise between smoothness and performance. I also prefer my window size to be 800 by 600 so I specify these here too. Nothing needs to be changed on the keyboard slash mouse tab or the ports tab. On the system tab, you can leave the RAM to 64 megabytes. I prefer to change it, but it's just me. Change the Mac model ID from Mac 2CI to Quadra 900, and then change the CPU type to 68040. Click the browse button next to the ROM file, and then find the Macintosh ROM that we put in the Basilisk 2 folder earlier. Finally, we can click start. Usually, Basilisk 2 will open if you've placed Basilisk 2 directly in the Applications folder, but we haven't done so, so it's not going to do anything. But this isn't a biggie. We can simply double-click on the Basilisk 2 directly, and it should start the emulator. Now the Virtual Mac thinks the ISO that I've chosen has been written to a hard disk and we're trying to boot from it rather than booting from a CD directly, so the computer says no. What we're going to have to do is find a boot disk, which was a little easier in my previous video as Redundant Robot had a Mac boot disk, but it's no longer available. However, this isn't a problem, as we can simply Google a macOS 8 disk tools image, download it and boot from it. Basilisk won't close if you click the red traffic light button or choose quit from the menu. Instead, you'll need to force quit it via the Apple menu. We'll need to remove the disks from the volumes tab in Basilisk GUI and then add the disk tools floppy first, the macOS 8 ISO, and finally the hard disk image. Then click start. This time Basilisk 2 should start booting from the boot floppy, and we can ignore the booting from floppy warning by clicking OK. You should then be prompted to format your disk image, I'm calling mine Macintosh HD, and then clicking on the initialize button. This will format the drive and you'll be taken to the desktop. Open the macOS installer CD image, in this case macOS 8.1, and install the operating system. When the installer's finished, shut down the virtual machine, and we can then remove the boot floppy and the installer CD from the volumes tab in Basilisk 2 GUI. I found that the setup assistant in both macOS 8 and macOS 9 in Sheepshaver hang when going through the setup, so I quit them without going through them. I'm going to mess around with the wallpaper here, and then we'll set the hard disk icon. Well, there we are, a freshly installed macOS 8.1 installation on a new virtual machine using Basilisk 2. You can now go and install your own software and configure it at your leisure. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching.